In this lecture, we're going to look at an introduction to cyber society, cyber culture, and cyberspace, which are three very closely knit topics. The topics that we're going to cover in this lecture include the objectives, uh, an, a brief, a crisp introduction to cyber society, culture, components of culture, uh, the culture of computing, the concept of cyberspace, cyberspace communities, as well as the effect of cyber culture on the society. The main objectives of this lecture include that we are going to see that, you know, how, uh, how by looking into these concepts, a positive online environment of internet users and a healthy cyber culture from the internet community, why it's important, how it can be created. The second objective of this lecture is a recognition of the power of the internet to benefit ourselves as well as the community at large. And the third objective is that we want to reflect on how to become a responsible user of social networking sites. And we want to, you know, manifest a commitment towards building a healthy cyber culture. Let's look at what a cyber society is. Well, before visiting cyber society, let's look at the essence of what a society is. A society which is formed by us humans consists of the interconnections between humans, their surrounding, their environment, our connection with one another, our living style, our culture. Uh, now, uh, with the advent of internet, uh, nothing, I believe, uh, has, you know, transformed humans uh, the way this advent of internet has. No other technology has possibly brought a, about a global change the way internet did. And now with the birth of internet, it brought about, a, you know, a virtual society, which is, you know, a virtual uh, manifestation of the society that we have otherwise. And that is called a cyber society. A cyber society, most specifically, is defined as the construction, maintenance, and facilitation of community in electronic networks and computer-mediated communication. Now, what is a cyber society? That just how, in a real life, uh, we as individuals, as humans, have connections one another inside, and, and in order to live our day-to-day -day life, we carry out businesses, we interact we, with others, uh, we, we have certain sources of entertainment. Similarly, in a virtual way, in a, in a cyber society, we, we carry out businesses, we interact with others, we have sources of entertainments, and so on. A fundamental difference between a regular society and a cyber society is that a regular society is bounded by a region or bounded by certain geographical limits, whereas a cyber society is global. It is connecting us to everywhere across the globe. As ordinary societies are marked by a certain culture which, of which we are living embodiments, similarly, a cyber society, which is a virtual society, also is defined by its own unique culture. Now, what is a cyber culture? Uh, well, cyber culture is that just how in a regular society, there's a certain language we use, there's a certain way in which we interact with each other, there's a certain etiquette we follow, there's a certain decorum we follow, there's a certain code of conduct of business. Similarly, the cyberspace, it has its own etiquette, it has its own language, it has its own means of carrying out business. And this overall constitutes the cyber culture. Uh, as I said earlier, you know, uh, like every culture in real life, the cyber culture has its own language and it is, uh, and, uh, and it is, uh, you know, and, and what that language is, that it actually converts our human written language or our human spoken language into machine language, which is understandable by computers in general. Furthermore, uh, especially, uh, you know, uh, the cyber culture, in contrast to the actual societal culture, it allows for, uh, you know, a written text communication, it allows for oral communication, which can be done through a number of means, a uh, number of means and mediums. Let's now look at the various components of cyber culture, which, uh, which define the cyber society. Those components include internet, it includes various websites which we browse, it includes email, it includes blog, it includes online chatting, it includes e-commerce and, in, and it includes various social networks such as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and so on. Uh, now we'll briefly look at what these components are. Internet, we, are, uh, we all know, is a network formed by the cooperative interconnection 
of a large number of computer networks. Nobody really owns the internet. There is no central administration to the internet. Main goal of the internet is to connect several computers together for the exchange of messages and for sharing information. An internet, as I told you earlier, which has revolutionized the human race, is a community of basically all people, and it is a collection of all resources. Uh, the second uh, component of cyber culture, which comes under the umbrella of internet, is having a website. A website, technically defined, is a location connected to the internet that maintains one or more web pages. Uh, web pages are the building blocks of the website. We can access the website and access the web pages and access any information, any content, whether that uh, may be technical content, entertainment content, uh, is provided on the website and the enclosed web pages. The third component, which we're all at some level or the other familiar with, is an email, electronic email, which allows people sitting at the two opposite ends of the world to reliably communicate with each other. The fourth component, what we can say, is a blog. A blog is a discussion on, or an in, uh, informational site published on the web, and it consists of discrete entries. Then the next component, which each one of us are now on our daily base using, is the online chatting. You know, whether it is done through social networks, whether it is done through, you know, through text messaging, or, uh, you know, online chatting is a very, very essential feature of the cyber culture, which is, uh, you know, which is defining the cyber society. Then, further move, more moving on, how in a regular society, societies are marked and defined by the businesses uh, that we carry out. Similarly, a very important component of cyber culture is e-commerce, where you know we're doing online shopping, where we have online marketplaces, we have a business to business buying and selling. We all we may even have business to consumer buying and selling. Then you know there can be online newsletters for marketing perspectives. Lastly, but uh, I would say uh, most importantly, the cyber culture these days is characterized by social networks which most of us are at, uh, you know, one or the other, we are making use of one or the other social network, whether that is for staying connected with our loved ones through, you know, sharing messages, sharing our daily activities, sharing our photos, videos, or whether it is for professional purposes, such as a use of website like LinkedIn, whether it is, uh, you know, so it's, it's use of these social networks, an example of which could be Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. This is, you know, a very, very important aspect or component of the cyber culture. The third very closely connected component of cyber culture and cyber society is a cyberspace. A cyberspace is a space that is created through the union of electronic communication networks, such as the internet, which enables computer facilitated communication between any number of people who may be geographically dispersed around the globe. Cyberspace is a public space where individuals can meet, exchange, ideate, share information, provide support, social support, and carry out business. Now, if I contrast cyberspace with an actual physical space uh, before the advent of internet, it is how, let's say, in a corner gathering or in a meeting where several individuals could meet, share ideas, carry out discussions. So a cyberspace is actually a virtual version of that physical space, of those physical meetings that people would have. You know, they can include political discussions, they can include uh, various forms of entertainment, they could include, uh, you, know, uh, you know, at times, uh, these gathering of families and very close ones, a reunion of sort. Uh, carrying on uh, with, uh, you know, you know the, the essence or the concept of cyberspace, we know that human interaction does not require physical connection uh, to communicate but it is rather characterized by the interconnection of millions of people throughout the world through chat rooms, emails, Facebook. Uh, here we see the various mediums which help us in creating that cyberspace. Facebook, for instance, Twitter, for, for instance, uh, Skype, for instance, Google, for instance, are just some of uh, the, the mediums through which you know, cyberspace exists and people are making use of it. Uh, moving on to cyberspace communities, we see that due to worldwide use of computer networks, people are now able to get together and form cyber communities that can exchange messages easily through the cyberspace. Physical meeting has been reduced 
to the introduction of cyber culture and cyber uh, meetings. Moving on to the effects of this cyber culture on our society. We see that uh, you know, cyber culture has brought a tremendous impact, a great impact on human individuals' life. Uh, in education, the style of teaching and learning has changed. Student-teacher interaction has specially changed. This came, became even more prominent during the times of COVID-19, when even regular universities, regular schools, regular colleges shifted to the cyberspace, had to adopt to cyber culture in order to teach and impart. Further, uh, you know, in, uh, as, as far, uh, due to this uh, introduction of cyber culture, a lot of business such as, you know, carrying out meetings, carrying out conferences has now very easily moved into the cyberspace and that is bringing about an advantage of reducing uh, time, of saving resources of all kinds. Moving on to other effects and impacts of uh, cyber culture, we see that cyber culture has reduced the gap between groups and individuals which may be separated from one another for various reasons. For instance, if a certain individual is carrying out higher education in a far off country, that particular individual is very easily able to stay connected to family at home, whether that person wants to stay connected to their parents or to their peers and, and so on. Further, uh, however, like, like all good inventions, when there are positives and good sides, there is also a downside. The downside of this prevalence of cyber culture is that face-to-face -face communication, human-to-human -human bond, human-to-human -human interaction has greatly suffered. It is not a scene that we do not see on our daily lives, that we have individuals sitting in the same room, our family members living in the same house. However, you know, instead of communicating with one another at a personal level, they are making use of cyberspace, they are making use of social networks to, to communicate with each other. Nevertheless, uh, as I said, with all inventions, while there are advantages, there are disadvantages. While these disadvantages exist, the advantages are humongous. Not just the fact that the cyber culture has reduced distances, the cyber culture has made business very easy, has made education very easy, has made staying connected with a large number of people very, very easy.